I'm here at the Space Warehouse today to compare the iPhone 12 Pro Max, which is really just an ARM-based computer with a camera on it, to the Nikon D850, which is a pro-level DSLR with a computer in it. I'm going to compare their capabilities. We're going to talk about portrait mode. I'm going to compare their picture quality and, of course, their physical size and the convenience of carrying around one over the other to make your memories. My name is Nicholas Johnson, and this is the Space Warehouse. <laughs> Let's take a look at these two camera systems. The iPhone has three lenses built right into it. It has a 13 millimeter, 26 millimeter, and 65 millimeter equivalent field of view. And then it just uses a software zoom to go between those three lenses, which means to get the equivalent field of view with the Nikon, I have to have these two lenses, a 14 to 24 and a 24 to 70. But instead of using a software zoom, they have a mechanical zoom, which means any focal length throughout the range will have the camera's full resolution, which brings us to resolution. The iPhone 12, same as the iPhone 11, and I think the iPhone 10, shoots 12 megapixel pictures, which is 4,032 by 3,024. The Nikon D850, however, has a 45 megapixel pixel sensor, which is 8,256 across by 5,504 tall. And initially you might look at those two numbers and think, well, 8,000 is two times 4,000, so this is just twice the resolution of a phone. But if you're stretching a picture out twice as wide, it also has to stretch out twice as tall. This camera will be shooting the equivalent of four iPhone pictures stitched together. Of course, this advantage does come at a cost. The iPhone weighs nine ounces, which is about half a pound. Whereas this camera body and these two lenses weighs in at about seven pounds, the equivalent to carrying around 14 iPhones in your pocket. The other cost associated with going with a professional DSLR over just using your phone is cost. This model, iPhone 12 Pro Max, the 256 gig one, is $1,199 from Apple. You buy it, it's ready to take pictures right out of the box. The D850 camera body alone costs $2,999 from Nikon. Out of the box, this can't take pictures at all, actually. You need a lens. For the wide lens, 14 to 24 from Sigma costs $1,399. And then the 24 to 70, also from Sigma, is $1,059. It's on sale. What a steal. Now it can take pictures, but it can't save them. This thing doesn't have any onboard memory, so you need memory cards. The D850 has two memory card slots, a QXD and an SD card. We go over to Amazon and the QXD card is $113 and the SD card is only 19 bucks. It's got cheap. So with the grand total of $6,788, now we're ready to take some pictures. This is a great time to mention that this video is not sponsored by Nikon or iPhone or anyone else at all. Let's talk about portrait mode. Portrait mode's been getting better all the time at taking portraits of people. But for some reason, when your subject is not a person, it still works, but it really needs you to be a specific spot, a specific distance away, and it'll sort of like jump in and out of the portrait mode. Whereas getting bokeh from a DSLR camera, you can just fire away no matter where you're sitting. It'll always work, obviously, because it's you know based on physics. The other thing about portrait mode that I really thought they were going to fix when they put the LiDAR sensor in here is that it'll blur out anything that's behind your subject, but for some reason it won't blur out stuff that's in front of your subject. Taking a picture of this fountain at this lake, there was a palm tree that was in the foreground. It's a pretty common element to add to your photos to just put something in the foreground, super out of focus, just kind of add some color, add some movement. Um, but the phone makes it so that everything's in focus. And even with portrait mode, you can't get it to, you can't, tell it that there's something in the foreground and you want to focus on what's farther away. HDR. So the iPhone has HDR built right in now and it's actually turned on by default. A great example of where this is super useful is windows and doorways that are open when you're inside a room or inside a house. I'm gonna shoot out my back door of the warehouse where it's pretty bright outside and it's pretty dark in here comparatively. If I take one picture without HDR, you'll see that if I if I expose for the indoors, the, the doorway is just gonna be totally blown out. And if I turn the HDR back on, I take a picture and then everything will be exposed properly. This big boy can do it too. They call it bracketing. So you just set up a bracket of however many pictures you want it to take and it's going to automatically just rattle off that many pictures and each one of them is going to be at a different exposure. And then you just bring all those pictures into Lightroom and Lightroom will combine them into an HDR photo. It's just that your phone does that all by itself, all in the background because it is a computer. Portrait mode is really good. Portrait mode, like this is a fine photo that if you just showed it to me with nothing else, although the color is kind of weird, I wouldn't, and you told me this was a DSLR, I wouldn't 
question that. This looks great. Like even the little wisps of her hair, eh, if you start to scrutinize it, you can see where the hair goes fuzzy. But they've done a way better job of cutting people out than when this was originally introduced. And if we compare it to the D850 shot that I took at the same time, other than the colors being completely different, this is all straight out of camera. I didn't do any touch-ups to either one of these. Actually, this one is a strange coloration, but that's what they did. They saved the sky. So the phone saved the sky better than my camera did. Unless you zoom in where it's a little unfair because of the crazy resolution, but this is a comparison. So you can actually see individual hairs that are in focus in front of the background, which still couldn't be possible with software, mostly just because the resolution is so is, is low enough that you can't even really see those hairs. Zoomed out, as far as like a Facebook profile picture or something, these are both, you could call it equal for what it is. Comparing the low light capabilities, even though that's like one of the biggest things that they touted on the iPhone, you just can't overcome some of the physics. The sensor on a full frame DSLR camera is just many times larger than the sensor on a phone. The, literally the amount of light that can land on it is far, far smaller on the phone than it is on the D850. This is the same shot at the same time. Uh, yeah, the D850 managed to keep a lot of the quality and there's some noise in the sky, but it was dark. There's really no comparison there. And to be fair, this is really dark. Like this is extremely dark shooting across a dark lake at a thing that's really far away. And so I wouldn't expect the iPhone to be able to do that at this point in time, but it does have the in-body stabilization. This has IBIS, so that the sensor is actually dodging around to sort of like counteract the movements of my hand because, you know, I'm a human being and shooting at a fifth of a second is super slow. Here's another portrait mode comparison. And again, at its regular size, I would say these pictures are both fine. They're both just great. On the iPhone one, you really got to zoom in before you can start seeing the where it cuts off part of her flowing hair versus on the, the D850 where all of her hair is obviously there and the little flyaways and all that. All the way zoomed out, portrait mode's pretty cool. Portrait mode is, is a pretty cool trick. So I was trying to take a picture of this duck. I was trying to get portrait mode to kick in. It just wouldn't. It just kept on telling me to place the subject within eight feet. Well, I couldn't get within eight feet of this duck, so I couldn't use portrait mode. And so that's the picture that I got. If we compare that to the D850 one, there really kind of is no comparison. This is D850 on the left, iPhone on the right, and especially when you zoom in to like his feet or whatever, it's just so noisy on the iPhone one. And the D850 it really isolates his feet from the background and from the foreground too. Again, going back to the portrait mode, well, it didn't even kick in at all, but even if it had, the foreground would be totally in focus and the background was where the blur would be. You can see there's a big win for the D850 on the duck. One instance that I found where it's pretty much like you could just use your iPhone to take these kinds of pictures is a scene that's pretty far away from you. You don't plan on cropping in at all. You're not going to use it to print or anything. Like, let's just say these pictures are just going on the internet for whatever reason. I don't know why you take this picture. There's not really any advantage to either one of these necessarily, other than the fact that the D850 one is comprised of basically four full-sized iPhone pictures and you could zoom in all the way to just take this fountain and crop it out and not lose any quality. But without zooming in, wide pictures of faraway things, I'm gonna call it a tie. I mean, again, other than the resolution. Another big win for the D850 is its uncanny ability to just shoot right through chain link fences if you're up close. Like if you're right next to a fence, this camera can shoot through the fence like it's not even there. And that's because of how big the lens is. Like a little metal piece of the fence is just gonna pass in front of, what, 5% of this lens. Whereas with an iPhone, it's really literally gonna block the whole thing. So this picture and this picture were literally taken at the same place at the same time. It's crazy. If you don't shoot with a DSLR or with a long lens, you probably don't even know this is a thing. It's pretty weird, it's really cool. Um, I'm a race car photographer and I actually take advantage of this all the time shooting with these really super long lenses with these really big pieces of glass, you can actually be pretty far away from a fence and just blow through the fence, focus on what's past the fence, and the fence disappears. So this example of portrait mode working super well, if I open these two pictures of this parking meter and I didn't have the information at the top, I don't know if you could tell which one is which. I don't know if you could tell without zooming in, of course. I don't know you, if you could tell which one is the iPhone picture. When you do zoom way in, well, A, you can zoom in much further on the D850 picture, but you'll notice like this, even this Visa sticker is slightly out of focus. Yeah, like even the back of the actual machine is starting to get out of focus. Although the iPhone sort of emulated that by missing with its portrait mode, but zoomed out, Again, if this is a Facebook picture, I don't know why you're putting a picture of a parking meter on Facebook, but if you are, this could be a DSLR photo. It's pretty cool. So I was trying to get portrait mode to do this thing where you only have like one flower in focus and the rest of the thing is not. That's where I realized even with LiDAR, it won't like take away the foreground. 
It'll just take away the background. It does a great job of tracing out all of these other flowers, but with the D850, I mean, there's literally like this one flower and anything adjacent to it is gonna be in focus. Everything in front of it is completely blurred out. Everything behind it is completely blurred out. I would probably crop it something like this, and then you just have a clear focus on what's going on right here. Unfortunately, with the iPhone, no matter what you do, it's just gonna be a whole bed of flowers and, and that's it. This type of thing is probably the biggest advantage of having a DSLR camera. If you wanna super isolate things, or if you wanna shoot in the dark, or if you wanna really zoom into stuff. This last one is the last time I'm gonna pick on the portrait mode because you get it, like, it, you can't. Portrait mode is cool, but it's not, it doesn't have enough control. I kept on trying to get it to focus on the middle Lime bike, but it would only give me portrait mode on the front one. So that's what we get, we get the front line bike one. But looking in really close, it still does, it did a really good job of tracing it out. They've improved that algorithm pretty well, even like between the little handlebars and stuff. I think that's where the LiDAR is coming in to shine. If we compare that to the D850, same focal length, I was able to pretty easily get what I want. I just wanted the middle one to be in focus just because that's just a, I don't know, that's a look that I was thinking about. So that's what I that's what I wanted to try to do. Another example though, not using portrait mode and not trying to get bokeh in the background or in the foreground, the super wide angle lens on the iPhone is a really good lens. Like for how tiny it is, it is, it's really good. It hardly has any warp at all. These lines are really close to straight. Everything's obviously in focus. The sky is a little too blue, I would say. That's just the HDR thing, which you can turn off and have more control over your pictures. But yeah, the wide, the wide lens, I think the wide lens probably with this phone might be my favorite. And actually I upgraded from the 10. I skipped from 10 to 12. And so I never, this is my first time having this wide lens. Having a super wide in your pocket without having to carry around a six pound super wide is actually, that's pretty cool, it's pretty nice. That brings me into the last point I'm gonna make, and I'm gonna be really unfair to the iPhone, and that's specialty application. So the iPhone 12 Pro Max, super wide lens and wide lens, as long as there's nothing in the foreground, as long as you're not gonna like try to print these pictures out, as long as you don't need to zoom in an incredible distance, profile pictures, pictures for Facebook or whatever, it's, it's a fine camera, it does a fine job. But once you need specialty application, once you need the super zoom. This little elephant tusk is a 600 millimeter super zoom. This is all standing in the same place. This is the iPhone's telephoto lens. Zooming in, we can zoom into it, we can see the fountain, we see these people. I'm gonna straighten this up because that's bothering me. And see these people playing on their duck. That's great. We have essentially the same picture with the D850 with an equivalent lens. I can zoom in a little further because this has so many more megapixels, but then we get to a world that's really unfair. You put on the super zoom lens and I can actually not only see them, but I could steal the selfie that they're trying to take. And I was on the other side of the lake. This thing can look like a quarter mile away and read a damn credit card. It's pretty incredible. I don't know if that's a true fact, I might have made that up, but it shoots really far. And the iPhone's not gonna be able to do that for a really long time. There is that one phone that says that they have 10X zoom or whatever, um, but the picture quality from that is not like this at all. And it doesn't have, it wouldn't have bokeh behind them. Yeah, for super wide shots, if I was to show this photo here and then skip to this photo here, it's not immediately obvious which one's the phone, which one's the camera. So to wrap this up, the iPhone 12 Pro Max is an extraordinary camera for a phone. As far as I know, it is better than any one before it, but it's still gonna be a few generations before it can replace one of these things. Now, if Apple would focus on making a DSLR and put computational photography inside one of these cameras, take my money. I have been Nicholas Johnson. This is the Space Warehouse. I hope you found this entertaining or uh, informative in some way. I searched around for other comparisons of this particular camera and the iPhone and I didn't find any. So let this be a document that lives on the internet. The Nikon D850 versus the Apple iPhone 12 Pro Max. I've been playing a lot of Red Dead Redemption 2 and it just seems like I'm always arriving into cities, into major cities on train track. So I felt like that was like the most natural way I would come to this city. <laughs> I think a lot of people associate Orlando, Florida with just the theme parks. And uh, I don't think a lot of people know that we have like a city. Welcome to Orlando, Florida.